This is 5.1. We're going to review and multiply polynomials. My hope is here today that this is a review now. We've done a period and a half of exercises on this, so I'm hoping I can go relatively quickly. Uh, with your help, we're going to determine what is a variable first off, okay? What's a variable? Yep, I see. Yeah, an unknown number or in a in our case, we represent it by a letter, right? So it's a letter used to represent a value that can change. That's what it is, right? What would be an example, RC? What? Yeah, X. It wouldn't be two, but just X, right? That's our favorite one, X, right? We also use Y quite a lot, then maybe A, Z, right? All right, a term. Hopefully people can remember this from yesterday. What is a term? Nobody? Yeah. No? No, you're cl close. I think I know what you're thinking with that. You're thinking of a constant term. Right? Maybe we can define that as well. It's not here, but we'll put it down here. Constant term. Okay, and RC told us this is a number that does not, we'll say vary because of that word variable, right? So that's our constant term. But just a term is what? Yep. Yeah, good, very good. He said or, and or. So it's a number, number, or variable. Var, not value. Variable. A number, or variable, or any combination, any combo of numbers and variables. Right? Can you guys read my writing or is it like old man messy? It's okay? Can you read it? I think it's pretty good, but like that's, you know how you're biased for your own writing. Like I wouldn't say it's good, but I wouldn't say it's like un unlegible. Variable term, what's that? I don't think we talked about that. It's just a term. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, a term that has a variable. Term that has a variable. And the numerical coefficient. It's the number. Yeah, the number in front of the variable. The number in front of the variable. That's the coefficient. So like example, if we had two X, this guy would be our coefficient. I'm not sure why they call it coefficient. I don't know. Oh, here we go. Here's our all of our parts. So six is what? Yeah, coefficient. I just said it. Good job. Okay, Josiah, what is uh, this this portion here? X cubed, Y squared. What would that be called? Josiah. Oh, sorry. This this arrow, Josiah here, is pointing to the whole thing. What's the whole thing called? Josiah, you there? You awake? What? Are you telling me now? Can you give him a paper? Who is it that just got one? Alan. Alan, did you give him one? You said there was a lot, right? You left them in there? Did you give him Max's? You can shut it, yeah? Okay, Josiah, Jos Josiah, you're going to get the next one, so pay attention. Yeah, uh, the whole thing here, yeah, it's the term, right? That's everything. The whole thing is called the term. And then this portion here, Josiah, the x cubed y squared, 
What would that be in terms of our definitions here? No, it's not. It's not the value. Yeah, it would be. Did you say variable? Yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> really? Yes. What did I say? You said variable, and I said no. Sorry, my bad. Did I? Did I really? I'm trying to get confirmation on that, Douglas. Let's look, let's look at the tape. Should we go back? Check the tape. That's going to be something we check on YouTube, eh? Check the tape, see if I said no. We'll, we'll rewind it. We can check it when I'm done. We can check the tape for sure. All right, let's do this. We're going to go in order here. Maxis, what's the coefficient here? There's your term. What's the coefficient? Uh, sorry? I'm oh, sorry. Um, nine. nine. Alan? Coefficient? No, variable. Uh, variable? X, X and D. Yep. Okay, Janir, coefficient. Good. Okay, Jazai, variable. Yes, good. Okay, uh, Douglas, coefficient. Negative 7.2. Yeah, Andrew? Uh, it's B3W2. Jafet? Uh, 5.7. Jeds? Yeah, it's not there, N not applicable. Uh, Jaden. No. Nope. Good. Rudy. Good. Uh, Adrian. RC. Good. All right. An algebraic expression. All right, so this is made up of numbers and variables. So this algebraic expression is made up of numbers and variables. So, and I'm gonna put in here in brackets, multiple terms. Okay, it doesn't have to have, to have multiple terms, but it, you know, it tends to. So an example would be like two plus x cubed um, sorry algebraic expression doesn't involve my bad this is wrong doesn't involve polynomials algebra would just be 2 x squared and it's the polynomial that it has multiple terms okay so polynomial is an algebraic oh I'm off here is an algebraic expression, so it's a type of algebraic expression formed by adding or subtracting terms, right? So this one's example would be like 3x squared plus 2x, say the minus y. And finally, polynomial expression is an algebraic, algebraic expression formed by one or more terms. So this is uh, algebraic expression formed by one or more terms separated. by plus or minus so really there's not much of a difference there right between polynomial and polynomial expression they're pretty much the same thing right Polynomial has multiple terms. Polynomial expression is just an algebraic expression with multiple terms, or same thing. What's the word that comes after expression? Is that form, format? Yeah, formed. 
That was pretty bad. That was pretty bad right here. All right, let's keep going. Okay, a polynomial can be classified by the number of terms it has. So, we've reviewed all this, right? Do you remember what the three types of polynomials there are? Yes, lots of hands. Judge, were you not here yesterday? You were? Well, you were not, see? That's why you don't have your hand up. How many people got their hand up? Chenier, yeah, go ahead. Right? I'm going to put it down here. For a reason. What else? You're just looking for one? Yeah, yeah they're going to hit, hit all three. Yeah? Good. Yeah, actually, I'm going to get Jeds to try to guess on this. Guess how many terms a monomial has, Jeds? You got it. Guess how many a binomial has? You got it. Guess how many a trinomial has? You got it. It's that simple. All right, so there's the examples, right? Monomials separated. Now, these are not one term. They're separated by commas, right? So be careful there. That's a monomial. That's a monomial. That's a monomial. That's a monomial. This is a binomial. Binomial, okay? Trinomial, because there's three. One, two, three. Okay? So it's not the number of variables that makes it a trinomial. It's the term itself, which when you're multiplying all of them together, it's still a monomial, right? So if I had something like, you know, 2, or let's say 23x cubed a squared b4c7 d19 uh, h32. This is a monomial, trinomial, or binomial. It's a monomial, yeah. It's, even though it's super long, it's all together. So this is a monomial. Okay, so don't go by length, right? I could have a trinomial that is just 3 plus x plus x squared. This is a trinomial. Trinomial. All right? Okay, I think we're good with that. Uh, so polynomial, it says for our purposes here, polynomials with more than three terms are just called polynomials. For example, we would say that 4, 2, 3, 1 is a four-term polynomial, while A, B, C, D, C, D, D is a five-term polynomial. Okay? Try to classify each of the following polynomials based on the number of terms it has. Complete the chart and use words you just learned. All right. Jadine, yeah, the first one. Number of terms. Good. You really don't say a lot. Milkius, I don't think. Oh, Stefan, yeah. Stefan, go ahead. Uh, one, mono. Yep. Milkius. Yes? Yep. Andrew. Say what? Oh, sorry, I thought you were putting a, um, a six. Okay. Uh, six term Yes, good. Jafet. Jeds. <laughs> yeah, Jeds. Two, you plus me. Yeah, that's still, these are all still variables, even though they spell something. What is it, Jeds? Good. Sorry, what's your question, Adrian? Uh, for A, would any of you constant terms? Uh, yeah. You're right. Yes, good catch. Very good, man. I think I'm going to have a guest lecturer next next class. Adrian's going to come up here. I think you, that's like the third thing you caught me on today, I think. All right, what's this one? Axis. Yes, so what do I put here? Yeah. All right. Use the glossary in the text. So who's got a textbook around? Anybody? Anybody have a textbook? Oh, I have one right here. What? No one else? 
You guys know about the glossary? Yes. The degree of a term is the variable with the highest exponent, right? But I bet they got some fancy language in the glossary. Let's check it out. So, degree. Let's see what it says. I'm just going to put it up here. I won't write it down. Here it is. Degree of a term. Because it's all recorded anyways, right? The sum of the exponents on the variables in a term. So we're actually wrong there a little bit, right? If it's one variable, RC would be right. But if it's like two letters, you have to sum them up, right? You guys remember that, right? Remember? Okay. So next one is the degree of a polynomial. So it's right above it here. The degree of the greatest degree term. So in this case, it would be three. So that's the first definition you gave me. Basically, you gave me the degree of a polynomial, which is different from the degree of a term. Do you guys understand the difference? The so degree of a polynomial is the a greatest degree term, and the degree of a term is the addition of the exponents of that term. It doesn't matter if the, if the letters match. Actually, in fact, they won't match, right? All right. Yep. Sorry, which one are you talking about? This one or this one? Uh, the polynomial. The polynomial? Yeah. It's It's the exponent. It's the, the greatest it's the greatest degree of the individual term, degree of the term. So it would be, in this case, 3. But if this was uh, x, q, y, if there was a y here, it would be 4. OK? All right. Using this definition in your knowledge of exponents, Complete the following chart. When you see a variable with no exponent, the exponent is 1. When there are no variables, the exponents are 0. Okay. We can do this one. RC, sum of the exponents. X squared. What's the sum of the exponents? What? It's like literally 2 plus 0, right? We have nothing else to do. Yeah, 2. Good. And then the degree of the term? RC, the degree of the term? Two, yeah. Just you had bad luck with having it too easy. Rudy, next one. Yep. And the degree? Yep. All right, Jaden? Yep. One. Okay, Josiah. Yeah. Good. Junior. Yep. And? Yep. Mm, Jafet? Zero. Zero, good. And? Zero. Yeah, zero, or you could say it's constant. Okay, Josiah. Zero. Nope. You got one, right? Plus one, plus one. They all have one exponent, right? So what is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, three. three. And then the degree of the term? Three. Good. All right, so what do we notice here? One, one, one. The sum of the exponents is the degree of the term. Okay? So it says, use the glossary in the text to find the definition of the following expression. Degree of a polynomial. I think we did that already. I feel like we did that. Yeah, we just did that. We just did that one. Uh, based on what you just learned, try to complete the following chart. Okay, so we have some examples here. Uh, term with the highest degree is x. The degree of the highest degree is 1. And then the degree of the polynomial is 1. 
All right, so this is going to be uh, pretty easy here. Term with the highest degree is what? 9y3. 9y3, good. And then the degree of the highest degree, degree of the highest degree term. Degree of the polynomial, three. All right, this one, which is the term with the highest degree? We got two and four is six, and then we got six and one, yeah. Two x, six y. And then so the degree is going to be seven. And then seven. Okay. On writing polynomials, there are two common practices for writing down polynomials that make them easier to read. Ascending orders. Some people write them so that the terms increase in degree as you read from left to right. I never do this. Ever, never, ever in my life. I always do it. I'm assuming it's going to come up this way. Always, always, always do I put the highest degree term first quite literally looks backwards if you do it backwards okay just like standard form for a quadratic that we learned in the last chapter was y equals x squared plus 3x plus 5 that is standard form for a quadratic never have I ever have I ever seen this I've never seen it written that way okay it just looks super super weird even your A value would then be all the way over here. It doesn't seem to make any sense. So don't write it this way. Write it with the highest degree term first. It's going to make your life easier. All right. Add and subtract polynomials. Here we go. We get some hard practice. Okay. I think I'm going to go through this just to speed things up a little bit here. Okay, because we still have four more pages. So let's go through, I won't do them all, I'm going to do uh, A, let's do A and C, A and C, all right? So in this case, I can just get rid of the brackets because there's nothing in front of the brackets and there's no like terms inside the brackets. So I can just get rid of the brackets. Now I have my, all my terms exposed. Don't forget your equal signs. Now I can add up my X's and add up my constant terms. So I get 6X plus 1. Okay, let's do C. So here, just have a one in front of the bracket so I can just get rid of this bracket right away. Hopefully that's not too confusing. I don't know why you're putting brackets there, but they did. We can get rid of it because it's just a one. Now I have this negative sign. This negative sign, yeah, he, he has to go against all of these three. You cannot just do the first term. I'm going to say it again. Do not apply the negative term only to the first term. So many people make that mistake. Because it's a negative 1 here, and they don't see it, and they're just like, okay, negative 2x, and then they go negative 5x and plus 1. That's incorrect. You have to do this. Negative 2x squared plus 5x minus 1. Happens so often in my marking, in my career. Okay, now I have everything exposed. Don't forget your equal signs. You can now add up your uh, x squared. So in this case, it's 3 minus 2. My x's is 2x and 5x, so I get plus 7x. And then I have negative 4, and negative 1 is negative 5. Okay, let's do this one. Again, nothing in front of the brackets, so nothing I can combine in the brackets. So... I'm going to get rid of the brackets. Now, here, nothing common in the brackets. Only a 1 in front of the brackets. So what can I do with these brackets? Yeah, I can get rid of them because they're not, he's only multiplying by 1. So everything stays the same. Useless brackets that were in this question. Now, don't forget your equal signs. You can add up the squares. So 6x squared and 8x squared, 14x squared. And then I have xy's I can add up. Negative 2xy, thank you. And then I have my y squares. 
minus 5y squared. Always a good idea when you're, when you're writing, I know you guys are doing a lot of your tests online, but if you're writing something out, a nice big box around the final answer makes marking super easy. And it grabs my eye to the answer and I see that it's right, boom, you get a check mark and I move on. Okay, last one, six, uh, two C here. I'm gonna get rid of this bracket because it's just an imaginary one. There's no like terms in the brackets to combine. This negative sign I need to distribute. And then just another one. So don't forget your equal signs. Minus 2x, sorry, minus 2x plus 6x is 4x. And then negative 8 minus 7 is negative 15. Minus 2 is negative 17. Any questions with all of this? This last one? Yeah. Okay, so 6x, or this part or this part? Okay, 6x minus 8, there's no, no negative sign there, so that stays as negative 4x, negative 7. The negative sign gets multiplied to both these terms. They get released from the brackets. This one, the brackets are not required, so. 1 times 6x is 6x and negative 2. Do you understand up to here? Yeah. Okay. Now we have 6x and 6x and negative 4x. So did I mess up? I think I messed up. This is 12x minus 4. You're right. Thank you. 8x. And then I have minus 8 minus 7 is minus 15 minus 2 minus 17. That's why you were confused? Because it was wrong, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Product of mononomial and polynomial. Equals 2x squared plus 2xy equals negative 48a squared minus uh, 8 times 4 is 32a. It's plus, right? Negative 6x squared, negative 4x, negative 8. Uh, 12m squared, negative 24m equals negative 16x squared y, negative 8xy squared equals negative 18a3 plus 24a3b. Right? Moving right along. Factors. Write all of the factors of each number. Ooh, this is interesting. You guys know what a factor is? I don't think we talked about it yet. RC, what's a factor? Sorry? I don't think we talked about factors yet. Did you learn factors in grade nine? Okay, good. Adrian, what is a factor? Yes, the multiple of a number. So for six, what would it be? Good, one. Two, three, six. I agree. 34, what would it be? Factors. Alan, there's a lot in 34, I think. Or not that many. How many? Four? Alan, factors of 34. The easy ones are 1 and 34, right? We know that. What are these two in the middle here? Alan? You don't know what factors are? So it's just basically the numbers that could divide into 34. So if you have an even number, what always goes into an even number, Alan? Sorry? What? Yeah, it's an even number. What can you always divide an even number by? Yeah, two. So two is a factor. Okay? And then if it's two, what's two times what is 34? 34 divided by two. 17, thank you. So that's your other factor, that's it. 17, not many factors for 17. Zaya? Yeah, that's it, one and 17, that's it. Okay, when we have an even number, guys, I'll show you how to get the, at least most of the factors quickly, right? You get the one and the 44, and then the two, you know, goes in, so you can do two and 22. 
Okay? I'm just telling you how to get the, like, automatic ones, right? You can get one and two and divide it so you get those two. Now you have to deal with numbers higher. So how do you get the factors? You just keep testing. Well, there's three going to 44. You guys want to know a really cool way to find out if three goes into any number? Hey, watch this. Give me a number in the thousands. Give me a number in the thousands. This is like, this is like uh, that, that mental math that people are, like, think you're a magician. Give me a number in the thousands. Sorry? Oh, huh. 6,834. 6,830. Three goes into it evenly. Divided by three on your calculator. Guaranteed. Give me another number. Was that right? Give me another number. In the thousands. Okay, 1,089, good question. Definitely goes into it, three, even number right into it. Am I right? Thank you very much, give me another number. Okay. 1,234 does not go into it evenly. Am I right? No, I'm checking threes. I'm telling you the trick, I'm gonna tell you right now, okay? You, this is perfect for factoring. It's a perfect trick. No. Nine million nine hundred and ninety-nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine. You think three goes into it? Yes. Definitely. You know the trick yet? Yeah. What is it? I think nine. No, it's not nine. One th one hundred and eleven. You think three goes into it? Definitely does. You got the trick? Who's got the trick? 222. Does 3 go into it? Oh, I think. Is it like. No. Definitely does. Someone's going to figure it out. The first and last one got to be Uh, Nope. 100. And 26, does three go into it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are yeah. you sure it's not something to do with the Yeah, I get it. Oh, you sent me that one too. Uh, 917. Does three go into it? No. Yeah, the last thing I had 915. 15? Definitely does. You guys get it? Yeah. So you just take the numbers and you add them, okay? So 915, this is uh, 9 plus 1 plus 5, this is uh, 7. Does 3 go into 7? No. Okay, but if I did 916, wait, if I did 917, I would get 9 plus 1 